Welcome back. This week we're going to go with Kelly Gallup's pearl necklace. We're going to do this with the, uh, it's going to be the improved necklace. It's going to be the one with the deceiver tail. Um, this used to be an absolute staple in my fly boxes when I was fishing in Missouri. If I had a bright day, guaranteed I was throwing the necklace and it flat out produced. Um, I've since gotten away from it a little bit more. Uh, Christy actually threw it last weekend for the first time in I don't know how long um, on the mow. And um, like I said, it used to be guaranteed every time I was on the mow, I was throwing that first on a bright day. Um, kind of coming around full circle, it's going to start going back into the rotation now. Um, but we're going to go ahead and tie this one. Um, to start on this, when Kelly did this, he used, uh, when he did the original, I'm not sure if he still uses the same hooks, but when he did the original, um, it was on the saltwater hooks, the 452s, 472s, I believe, from Daiichi. Um, I'm going to use an MFC. The uh, back hook is going to be a 7050 size 6, the front's going to be a 7052. Um, we'll get started on this six, and like I said, it's going to be on the deceiver tail, or it's going to have the deceiver style tail to it. So what I'm going to do to start on this one is I'm going to find my halfway point. I'm going to go a little bit past my halfway, and that's where I'm going to start on this one because we're going to do two Palmer plumes of marabou to finish out the back end or to finish out the back hook, I should say. But we're gonna start just past that halfway point right there. I'm gonna find two tails that I like here. This one, I'm starting to get a little bit picked through from all the white girls that I've been tying here lately, but uh, I'm fairly certain that we're going to find two little work. There's one. That's ah, all chewed up to. One of the few in this whiting that you'll find that gets beat up. This stuff is exceptional quality. Awesome for deceiver style tails. So, there we go. I'm going to take these now. And I'm going to line these up and I'm just going to flip them to where they're facing one another. There we go. Get those lined up. You can see how they're sitting. Perfect deceiver tails. I mean, you can't ask for anything better. This, this stuff, you get probably, I don't know, 100 flies worth of tails on that, um, depending on the size that you're tying. And then you still have some left over for, for slopping and uh, for saddle as well. But like I said, I'm just gonna line those two up. You can see how they're sitting right there. Everything's nice and even on the tips. Um, I turn the two around so they're facing one another. Opposite of what I do with the white girls, I flip them to where the curves, and these don't have a real um, pronounced curve like some of the stuff you'll get in the package. But there you can see, let me get a better look at that. There you can see that curve a little bit. I'm just gonna put the two together like I said, when I tie the white girls, I, I put the, the curves facing away from one another. Um, that way it gives me just a little bit more motion, a little bit more profile when it's in the water. So we're going to get these lined up. And tying in deceiver style tails is something that I honestly struggled with for a little bit. Um, when I first started doing them, I would try and put one on one side of the hook, I would try and put the other on the opposite side and then have them line up, and then they would always seem to want to twist on you. So the easiest way that I've found to do this is to just get everything lined up how you want it, sitting right like that. I have my measurement right there to where my tail is going to come back to the knob on this material clip or the material holder and that's where I'm going to peel all of these fibers back. I'm just taking a little bit of fiber and I'm leaving 
just that little section right there that I'm able to tie in and it's going to be able to get me a little bit more of a grip. And then I'm going to take just a few feathers from the underneath side and peel those off. So I have that underneath side is just a little bit shorter on the feathers than the rest of, or than the top is. And then all I do is I set these right on the top, secure them in place with some nice loose wraps, and then I work my way up through that grip or right through those feathers that I left to get that extra grip. And there you can see you have a perfect set of deceiver style tails running straight back. Now, what, what you will run into when you buy this stuff, um, I don't know if I have a package sitting around here or not. Uh, most everything's in the back room um, on the wall there. But a lot of times what you'll run into when you buy the stuff that's in the package, you'll have the twists and the curls. You're not going to get a perfect deceiver style tail to look like that on the majority of them. There are some in there that are exceptional that are just as good as this right here, but they will have some twists. It'll be a little bit more difficult to get that nice look for you. Next up, we're going to take our first plume of marabou, and I'm just going to trim that off, and we're going to get this tied in. I'm going to set this in, and I wound up getting a little bit further back than I wanted to on this. I may end up needing a third plume. That's wanting to turn on me. So. A good thing to do if you're tying in these marabou plumes, any type of stem really, even if it's a deceiver style, if you could see that was wanting to spin on me a little bit, just take a pair of scissors and flatten that stem out. Right there. Now you can set this and it's going to be set in the direction that you want it to go. Real quick makes it a hell of a lot easier than trying to to fight that when it's not wanting to cooperate for you. So now, find my hackle pliers wherever I put them. There we go. A little disjointed getting this one started here today. So, we'll grab our hackle pliers. We already have everything in the cradle. And then I'm just open taking open loops, open wraps on this, working it all the way to the end of the usable feather. Then I'm going to throw this in and tie that off. You can see all of that. We don't have anything trapped in there. All of our feathers are nice and clear. And then all we're going to do is just peel this back and we're going to take it about halfway back on the wraps that we just used for the marabou. And you can see everything just folds over real nice. Everything sits exactly how we want it. Get that marabou, or get that tail to sit for me. Now at this point you have an option. If you want to throw a little bit of extra flash in here, you can. You could take, I would take some silver holographic. I'm not going to on this one. Um, but if you want a little bit of extra flash, or you could even do it before the first plume and you could just run it down parallel with the deceiver tails. I'm not going to, I'm going to leave this one as it is um, because this, this fly inherently has more than enough flash. Uh, a couple strands of flash of boo aren't really going to do a ton to it, but it is an option if you want to add a little bit extra. Once again, that one's wanting to turn on me. We'll just mash that down a little bit. Make sure that that feather isn't going to fight me when I try and palmer it. Get that set in place. Come around, grab the tip of our feather again, and then try and keep my hand out of there 
There we go. And I'm just going to wrap that forward all the way up to the eye of the hook. And I think I can get one more wrap in there. Now we'll tie this off. is essentially the back hook of the necklace. Just going to peel these fibers back, get everything sitting how I want it, and then I'm just going to make a few wraps. Just like that, I'm going to clear the eye up a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch back. Still have a nice clean eye. And we're set. There is the back hook. We'll reset those tails. Get rid of that. And then we're going to go with our articulation wire here. I'm going to set this in get a kink right in the center and we're gonna go with one red bead this is just a six millimeter bead or a six odd bead sorry um, you can pick these up at just about any craft store out there I go with the six aughts um, I like the size of those I do have some stuff that I got from hairline um, these bigger beads you've probably seen me use them in the past um, I'll use these every once in a while uh, mainly on the bigger patterns, you know, the white girls, sometimes on the Octobers. Um, if I'm doing full-size barrelies, I'll use those, but for the most part, I like those six-odd beads. Um, that's what I typically try to, or what I typically use. Now we're going to go to a size 2, like I was saying, this uh, MFC 7050. And to finish this fly off, we're going to use a... Uh, small medium fish skull head um, you can see it right here I'll get this in the camera hopefully there we go there's a good view of it you can see this section right here to where there's that extra weight underneath there where it's slotted and it's going to be heavier on that bottom side this top section has a lot less material that heavy bottom section as I'm holding it right now when we put that on it's going to go over or it's going to be on the bottom of the fly that way the weight's going to be forcing the hooks to ride down if you flip it the opposite direction your hooks are going to ride up like you see in the Clouser minnow um, so we're going to have the weight on this one down so then we're going to just get a gauge right here we're going to set the flop or we're going to set this eye on there or this uh, fish skull head on the top of this and we're gonna have a nice clear eye right there and then just get a quick idea of where your materials are gonna stop so you can see looking right through that top section there that's where I want my materials to stop I don't want to go any further than that so what I'm gonna do then is just get my thread right there now I have a reference that I'm not gonna have any material going past that obviously when I tie in the the stuff at the end there's gonna be some bleed through um, to get everything trapped but I'm not gonna be placing any material in front of that white section or that white thread right there so now we will just get this set in place, get a thread base down. I'm going to go one more time through, like so. And then I'm going to get my back hook. I'm going to have everything evened out here. Make sure my wires are running parallel, as always. And I'm just going to set that down on two, about a half a dozen loose wraps. Get a gauge on where my bead's at right there. 
I want about the same distance on this bead as I have for a gap right there and then just flip that around and then I can really wrench down on that and if you've watched the other video about reducing the wire kinks just one quick wrap around there and that will get that set in place get that out of the way those things are going to want to fight me there and then we're just going to wrap this through and then double this wire back over get over here same thing bring those around and I'm gonna have that coming back about three quarters of the way back that hook and then I'm just going to clip these off with some old scissors. There we go. Everything's secure. Everything's in place. We're ready to start tying on this front hook now. So for the body on this one, and it's going to act as a skirt as well, we're going to use some silver ice dub and silver holographic ice dub we're going to use these two together to form our body um, before i do that let me grab my dubbing loop tool there and i'm just going to make a quick loop get that secured and then i'm going to work my way up to the front throw my loop in there and then half hitch and then I'm going to work on building this body. So we got everything sitting in place how we want it ready for our body material. Now what I'm going to do with this is just take a little bit of this silver and I'm going to set it out. You can see, well no you can't see that one. Let's see here maybe I can move this around no it's just not going to come through i'm not going to be able to pick that one up that's all right i'll hold it in my hand here in a second let's see here where would that be there we go i'm able to get that in my back camera a little bit it's not the best view of it it's probably going to be a little out of focus but be able to get an idea of what we got going there so i used just the silver ice dub on that and then i'm just going to lay this holographic go in the opposite direction. So the silver ice dub is going up and down. The holographic, I'm gonna go left to right. And I'm just gonna throw some pieces in there. Um, I'm just gonna lay a couple in there and this is just gonna give a, another dimension to this when I go and throw this in the, uh, in the dubbing loop. You can see it's a pretty bulky section right there. It's a decent amount of ice dub that we've got and then I'm just gonna pick this up in my hand probably wasn't the best idea to put it down on that uh, piece of fabric I got there but we'll make it work so now we have that and I'm just gonna put this in my loop you can see the loop that we have here I want to manipulate this just a little bit I've got the pieces going up and down and then side to side. It's kind of crisscrossed all through there. I have my loop. You can see this. I want a little bit more up at the top here. I want some longer sections because I'm going to peel that back and it's going to be part of my skirt that I'm going to use on this. And then toward the front, we'll go ahead and just flip that dubbing loop tool out all together. Why not? Should have put it down. All right, that did not go as planned. Did not go as planned. So we'll work this back in here again. Should have put that tool down a little bit before I tried to spin it. Oh well. Oh well. All right, 
So we got everything back in place there. No major disaster. And then I'm just gonna take that tool, give it a quick spin, and then I'll pick this up so you can see everything go. It's a little lighter on the front or on this top portion than what I would like it to be. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna manipulate this and peel some of this stuff down. Just kind of loosen that stuff up a little bit. And you can see I left that section right there really loose um, for a reason. I want to be able to manipulate this as I'm spinning it. I'm going to give it one more turn just to tighten it up a little bit and then I'm going to pick this stuff out slightly before I start wrapping this. Now we're going to make our first wrap or two there and I'm still picking this stuff out toward the back. I'm going to stretch that section, one, two, three, pick this out, stretch, one, two, and three, just pick it out, stretch that, and you can see this stuff, it almost looks like a UV puller, because we have a little bit of extra length right through there, there's a little bit of extra length, and then a little bit of bulk to that body, like I was saying before, that's going to cover up and act as a skirt as well. So I'm going to get a couple more wraps, just pick this out, give it a stretch, and then that's going to be the last one and I'll tie this off. There we go. Now, get that out of the way. Still not going past where I tie it, where I initially tied in with the white right there or with the thread. I still have all of this and I moved this back a little bit because I didn't want to rush through that and wind up having too much bulk to where I can't get the head over all the material. So the next up on this we're gonna go with just some white bucktail. And you don't need a ton on this to get the profile that you're after. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit here. I'm going to clean this out in the comb. Get everything sitting how I want it. Make sure that my tips are relatively even. If there's a couple of long ones, I'll get rid of them instead of throwing them in a stacker. I don't want a whole lot of bulk on this at the tie-in point. So I try and get rid of as much as possible to still keep some even tips and not get a ton of bulk. So there we go. We're looking pretty good right there. I'm going to measure this out now on the front or on the top half and I want that bucktail going almost halfway back into the back hook. So there's the measurement that I have right there. I'm going to take this now and I'm going to cut this at an angle. That way when I tie it in, I'm, decre I'm, I'm limiting the amount of bulk that I'm going to have and I'm still going to have a really secure tie-in section right there. So I'm going to back that up all the way, get a couple of loose wraps, a couple more loose wraps, making sure that you're keeping this on the bottom section and then I'm really going to wrench down on that. And you can see it just flatten everything out. That gel spun thread, you're able to really peel down on that stuff. And uh, it's going to respond for you. It's going to flatten that stuff out pretty well. And you're going to get a really secure tie-in. So now I'm going to peel this back some. Just for nothing else to get it out of my way for now while I'm tying the rest of my materials in. There's a couple there that are going to be a little difficult, but that's all right. We'll work with it. Um, on this bottom section here, we're going to take probably a half a dozen strands of clear flashaboo. Um, I think this is a pearl, actually, a UV pearl. I like the clear, well, I don't know, either one you're really not going to go wrong with. It's not going to make 
or break the fly at all. So like I was saying, somewhere about a half a dozen strands and then I'm gonna wet that material so it stays together for me and it's not gonna go flying all over the place. And then I'm gonna bring this down and I'm gonna have it just about the same length as the bucktail that I just tied in. Get a couple of loose wraps, fold these back over top, cut them to length. Let me find that other section, there we go. We're gonna cut those to length and then that's just gonna give you a little bit of a reflective value on the bottom section. You look at a lot of bait fish, um, their bottom and lateral lines are really reflective um, or they not really, not so much, well yeah, when something rolls in the water, you notice it right away. You see that underside, it reflects a lot of light. Um, so that's what this is after here a little bit, it's just to give a little bit of extra flash on this to imitate that sector, to imitate that. Then we're gonna take a piece of lateral scale and we're gonna run this down the side all the way into the back hook. I'm gonna take this back almost into the deceiver tail. Um, I'll trim a little bit of it out before I finish everything off, but right now I just have it general. I'm running it back into the deceiver tail. Then I'm gonna take a look at it once I get everything here. I want it going about to where that tail starts, about at the tie-in point. It's going back a decent way on this. You can see that reflective, let me get it to where, there we go, there's that reflective property of that lateral scale. And then I'm gonna come over on this opposite side. I'm gonna find it. Get it cut to length. We're gonna go back to the bucktail. Same thing on this. Not a ton of material. You don't want a ton on this. It'll create a lot of bulk in a hurry for you. I'm just gonna clean this stuff out. Even up my tips. Everything looks pretty good right there. I can get a little bit more out of there. There we go. Now we'll set this over top. Going back into the back hook on this. If you have to, turn this around, get the same measurement that you have on the bottom section. There you can get a gauge right there. Set that right over the top and then once again, we're gonna just cut that at an angle. Going away from, I didn't get quite the best angle there, but going away from your hand. Now you set this in, same thing. Get a loose wrap, another, and then just continue the loose wraps up to the top. May have one or two strands there that I need to clean up on that eye. And then I'm gonna peel down, or I'm gonna really pull down on that again. Just to flatten this out a little bit, make everything look good. The whole time that I was doing that, I didn't release the tension that I have on that bucktail that I have on the top. You don't want that stuff rolling from side to side on you. And you can see here that our body is clear on both sides. You don't want that bucktail coming into it and then it's gonna wind up distorting that silver that you have. Keep them nice and even on the top and bottom. Make sure your lateral scale's still good. Everything looks clean there. And then the last thing that we're gonna do on this before we put the head on is we're gonna take some Ice Dub Shimmer Fringe. This is the uh, Pearl Dark UV Blueback. This has some insane reflective properties and uh, and I've said it before in, in other videos 
when this thing's in the water on a bright day you can see this fly from space it's it's ridiculous how how much it it really stands out um, in the water so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a little section of this let me get that in the frame I'm gonna cut that out and then I'll hold this up so you can see just about how much I used on that. There's the section that we're going to be tying in. That blue and purple reflective section underneath it's got some some pearl and then the blue and purple a little bit of black whatever it may be that's the section that I want to be on the top so I'm just going to run this through the comb real quick clean this up get rid of some of the bulk that's in there you've got another non-compressible material here and I want to peel out some of that pearl if I have to I'll cut it now nah, that looks good now I'm gonna lay this over the top and I want it going at least the length of the bucktail most likely more times than not I tie this longer than the bucktail by maybe a half an inch or so and then same thing you're going to take this material cut it at an angle find your tie-in point i gotta spin that thread a little it wants to wants to go on me it wants to go the opposite way i want it to find your tie-in point get loose wraps work it to the front and then you can come back and really wrench down on that again and it's going to lock that in place for you really nice got a few strands wanting to come off no we're good just a few that were on the opposite side so now you can see that this uh, shimmer fringe is running right down the center of the hook right there right down the center it's nice and even on both sides it's not canted to one side or the other and it's using that bucktail as a prop to give a little bit more profile when it's in the water if you threw that in by itself it would flatten out really quick and wouldn't project the profile that this does so everything right now is set we've got our thread cut we just want to slide this head right over the top and as you can see because we put that reference point in there let me get my fat finger out of the way because we put that reference point in there from before we have a nice clean eye and we don't have a gap on this back section right there or on the underneath side it's going right into the material right how we want it all I'm going to do now is peel that or take that off I'm going to grab some Loctite. This is just some gel. And I'm going to put a drop right on the top of this. And I'm going to take a drop and put it on the bottom. Before I roll that head on there, I'm just going to spread this out a little bit. That way it's not going to run back into that shimmer fringe or into my bucktail, but it's still going to catch this head. So remember, like I was saying earlier, you take that weighted section, it's on the bottom, and then you just push that back into place. We still have a little bit of room there where we can build up a dam of thread if we want. All of our materials are nice and evenly spaced out we got this lateral scale make sure that it's running the direction that you want every once in a while when you put the put those heads on the lateral scale get pushed down a little bit it's an easy fix all you got to do is just peel it up and then make sure it's running behind that eye just how you want it so now the last thing that you that we'll do on this if I have it here 
Yeah. I'll just go back with the gel spun. I'll put some white on and color it. But the last thing that we'll do on this is I'm just going to build up a dam of thread right in the front. And I mentioned this before, I think it was on the tenant too. Um, for the patterns that I fish, uh, personally, I don't do this. Um, for all my commercial stuff, I will. Um, uh, that stuff's wanting to spin on me. For all my commercial stuff, I will do this um, just because, you know, I mean, people are buying flies from you. You don't want the, the head to come off eventually because it will inevitably if you just put the uh the super glue on there you bang it off a couple of rocks whatever it may be it's going to loosen up and it's going to come off on you this little dam of thread will keep things intact a lot longer um but like i was saying if it's my stuff personally um i just bring it home glue the head back on it's good to go but I'll just color that up a little bit, throw some black on it. Get that out of there. There we go. That'll do it. Even out the tails. Everything's sitting how we want it. That is Kelly Gallup's pearl necklace. This thing has probably caught as many fish for me as just about any other streamer. Like I said, there was a there was a there was a spell when I was just fishing this fly constantly, and it just flat out produces. I mean, not just on the mo. I mean, you take it to any river, it's going to be catching fish. I had some days on the Blackfoot, uh, the Madison, to where it just lit things up. So. Tie a couple of these up, carry them with you. If you get a really bright sunny day, go to this thing because like I said, it, it flat out fishes. As always, um, if you guys have questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you next week.